It's a new year, new me, I'm vlogging every day of January But I guess that means it's not a new me Because I'm doing the exact same thing that I did in 2020 Oh god, that can't be good Hi beautiful friends Guys, what's that sound? I heard a creepy sound outside. Anyway, um, hi guys. Welcome to today. It is Saturday. I just took a shower. I just put on some makeup. I'm about to post a vlog. Get some work done. We're recording the podcast tonight. I'm curious if anyone else out there feels this way who has experienced pregnancy. So I have quite a few friends who are pregnant right now, like acquaintances and things that I see on social media or follow on social media, have like a very light friendship with. I also have a best friend who's pregnant. I keep seeing these people post about pregnancy and they're like, I just love being pregnant. I can't believe it's almost over. This has been so incredible. This is the best I've ever felt. Like stuff like that. I see those posts or I hear them say these things. First thing that comes to my mind is I am so happy for them because I don't want anyone on the planet to experience a negative pregnancy. Like mine was, I think, traumatizing. Like it really scared me and made me very depressed and like, like, I hated it, as we all know. I've talked about this many times. Pregnancy was easily one of the worst things I've ever been through in my life. Like, I really hated it. I can't think of anything I liked about it, other than that like, it made a flint. Other than that, it was horrendous. And so I would never want that for anyone. And I'm jealous of these people, not in a like a vicious way, but just jealous of in the sense of like, oh, I wish everyone could experience that because that looks so amazing, like to enjoy your pregnancy. Now, having said that, when I see people say they enjoy pregnancy, to me, my brain doesn't compute it. So yes, my first thought is I'm happy for them, but my second thought is they're lying. They have to be lying. And I don't mean that in an accusatory mean way because then like my brain kicks in and my brain processes and goes like, no, like obviously they can enjoy their pregnancy. Every woman is different. Every body is different. So everyone experiences it differently. But mine was so horrible that when I hear someone enjoys pregnancy, the only thing I can compare it to is like, like, okay, let's say you, you break your leg, break your leg, all your bones shatter. It is awful, painful for months and months and months. You're just in excruciating pain. It is horrific. Everything about it is miserable. You go through that and then a friend of yours goes, oh, I broke my leg. I loved it. Like that's what it feels like to me. Like it feels like that. Cause in my mind, I'm like, that's impossible. You don't, you don't like it. Like that's impossible. It's awful. Like, and I know my rational brain understands like obviously they really do enjoy it. And like some women really do love it and really do like feel their best and are sad when it's over. Like I know that exists, but because mine was so bad, it like my brain is like, what? No one likes that. That's the only thing I can compare it to. Like something like breaking your leg where it's like a painful, horrible, not fun experience. Like no one would describe breaking their leg as like fun. I mean, maybe someone would, but I can't imagine that. And that's how I feel when people say they enjoy pregnancy. No, you don't. Like there's no way, but so many people do. I can think of three people off the top of my head that I know personally who love being pregnant and are sad when their pregnancy is done. And I'm happy for them. And I wish it was like that for everyone. I wish it was like that for me. It's probably a good thing it's not like that for me because I would have already had two more kids by now. Like I would have already had a second child and be pregnant with my next because I love being a mom and I want a million kids. So like if I loved pregnancy, I would have a billion kids probably. So it's probably a good thing. I'm so jealous that they love it. I'm so happy they love it. I wish that for every woman or person who is pregnant. And uh, that's not my experience. So my brain just thinks they're all aliens because that doesn't make any sense. Does anyone else feel that way? All right, I'm gonna go edit, but I love you guys. I'll see you a little bit. I'm in the podcast room, which I've never shown you guys. So I should do a video soon that like reveals the podcast room and what it looks like and all that. It's kind of like a office slash podcast room slash movie room. I am currently trying to fix or change my background for the podcast. No way, this is not going well. Hmm. Yikes, guys. Literally yikes. In the last episode of the podcast, my background, which is the Miranda wall, fell. Oh no. Fell down. And I was like, that sucks. And I wanted to do something different. I don't know if I have time because we're recording it tonight, but I wanted to at least attempt to fix it today. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to because this is, boy, it's not going well, guys. I'm gonna go try to fix my little Miranda wall. See you guys in a little bit. What happened? You went into puddles. Oh yeah? You went into puddles? Yeah. Did you get wet? Tush, tush. Oh, hair. Oh, that's where you got wet? Yeah. Oh no. Dad is wet. Yeah, Dad. Dad got wet too. Oh, uh -huh. what? What happened? How did you do the wet? You got wet. Yeah. Oh no. Are you gonna go back in the puddles more? Yeah. 
You want me to go? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. What happened? Yeah. You got wet? Huh? Should we take off your wet shoes? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's in the day. In the day. I think we should take off your wet clothes, Flynn, before you chase Gus. Hey, Flynn. Hey, Flynn. Can I take off your jacket and your shoes? No, they aren't. Thanks for closing up, buddy. What you got? Pockets. You got pockets? Let me see those pockets. Wow, that's pretty cool. You do have pockets. Hmm. Wow, I never thought a uh, human Dada, walk Dada, Yeah. Dada, pockets. Oh, wow, cool pockets, man. Pretty cool. Dada, Dada, Dada. Yeah, I got pockets, yeah. What's up? Mama, pockets. Oh, sure. I got pockets. There. Mama, all the pockets? The other pockets? Okay. Here Mama, go. pockets? All the pockets? Yeah. Okay, go stand next to Dada. We'll all do pockets. This? Yeah. Like that? Hey, Flynn, what's it time for? Dance party! A dance, dance party! Bubbles. Oh, bubbles and a dance party. All right, here we go. camera's dead so I'm using my computer camera. Hello. I didn't vlog much today. I did not have a wonderful day. I'll talk about that a little bit in a minute but first I want to share some footage with you from yesterday. So in my vlog yesterday I talked about Jojo because Jojo posted a picture online. So basically because I was talking about her and something huge in her life I just wanted to double check with her if it was cool that I posted it before I posted it. So I reached out to her but I was waiting to hear back and she was really busy so I was like you know what I'm just gonna take it out because I haven't heard from her so I just deleted it out of the video yesterday and then right after I posted the video she texted me she was like oh my god yes of course you can talk about it sorry I've just been so busy um she was like yes of course like you can say anything you want like love you and then we facetimed and talked and all as well so but I just wanted to check with her since it was like kind of a big deal um what she's going through and what she's experiencing right now is really big I was like I think maybe before I talk about her and this situation I should check with her so that's why it wasn't in the vlog yesterday but now it's gonna be in this vlog so here's that <laughs> I need to talk about something I just finished my makeup and I need to film a video but this is more important I've been been wanting to talk about this for a while. Now I feel like it is appropriate to talk about. So Jojo just tweeted this. I'm getting a million texts from Jojo and Rachel right now. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Jojo, leave me alone. I'm trying to show your tweet. Jojo, stop. <laughs> okay, so this is the tweet. So here's what I want to say. I am so happy that things are changing so much in my lifetime, that I get to watch change happen. And I know there's a lot of things in our world that still need to change a lot as far as like equality with women's rights and social injustice and oh my gosh, the racial issues are so horrendous and there's so much that needs to be fixed. And the discrimination against the LGBTQ plus community, there's so much that obviously that still needs to be done. But to see teenagers be comfortable enough and confident enough in themselves and who they are to be who they are unapologetically, publicly, online is so shocking and surprising and beautiful to me as someone who, th like, I thought I would never see that in my life. Basically, my generation did not experience this, what I'm seeing now. And it's beautiful and heartwarming and emotional to see these kids be able to express themselves and explore who they 
are uh, unapologetically and without fear. Because that is not what I experienced and that is not what I saw when I was their age. And I know I sound like an old person saying that, but like I don't think a lot of people understand how different it was 20 years ago, but 10 years ago, even five years ago. Like society is changing so much and I'm so glad. But you guys, like I went to a high school, a public high school with thousands of people. Like, and there was not one person, not a singular person that was out of the closet. Not one. Not only did I not know anyone uh, like that in high school, but also in college. I, no one at my college was allowed to be out. It wasn't even like if they wanted to be, they could. Like literally contracts were signed at my college that said you would not participate in any homosexual activities. So to see that like young girls and boys can just be themselves and like openly say, this is who I am. And like, I love myself for it is so, so cool. And I'm like jealous of that for my friends who like, I don't have a single close friend who is part of the LGBTQ plus community who came out to me and it wasn't traumatic. Like every person who I know that came out to me who was a close friend, it was hard and sad and it wasn't a beautiful, like everyone accepts them and loves them. It was like sad because they thought coming out to me meant that I wouldn't be their friend anymore because that's what they experienced from everyone else around them. Like my friends had parents who disowned them, friends who disowned them. So many people were like, I don't want to be associated with you. You're disgusting because of who you are. And that's what my friends have experienced that are my age. And so to see like, to see people be able to come out and see everyone like love them and see people support them for that is really just so incredible. And it's so like, beautiful to see that people can change and people's mindsets can change and people's ignorance and hatred and closed-minded views can shift and people can grow and learn and become more uh, loving and educated and open-minded and to watch that happen in my lifetime is so beautiful because like you know jojo posted that photo and like i was looking at the replies and they're all we're so proud of you and I'm like, I'm so happy. I'm so happy that people can come out now and they're accepted and loved and like celebrated for like just being who they are. But it makes me really, it sounds weird. Like, but I said it already, like it makes me jealous of that for my friends. Like I wish that my friends who came out when it wasn't accepted could have that. But I'm also grateful to be part of the generation of people who fought so hard so that people could come out freely. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't think people understand now in newer generations how much people went through before them so that they could be unapolog unapologetically themselves. Now, I'm not saying there's no bullying with that stuff. There certainly is. Oh my God, there's still so much bullying and hatred towards that community. I'm not saying that there's not, but it has improved so much from where it was. I know we have a long way to go. It's because people went through so much. It's because my friends, like Corey, were able to come out at a time where it was not okay to come out. It was not cool to come out. It wasn't trendy to come out. It was looked down upon. It was the opposite. It was bad to come out. It was hide it. It was go to therapy, get better, go to conversion therapy or get a counselor or pray more. Something is wrong with you. I love you, but it's a sin. So I love you, but you're still disgusting to me because people in my generation and prior were brave enough to come out in those scary situations and be themselves. It's paving the way for this current gen upcoming generation and the generations past that to be who they are unapologetically and not be afraid to come out because people before them were afraid to come out and they still did. I don't know, I just, I feel very like emotional and like grateful that I get to watch the change happen because I really didn't think because of how much hatred I saw in my lifetime towards that community, I never thought I would live to see a day where it wasn't like that. I know I look like a mess, I just woke up. I wanna clarify something really quick as I'm watching this. I realize I didn't word this quite correctly. I'm very aware that there are still so many people currently who are afraid to come out um, in the LGBTQ plus community. My point was just that it's shocking to me that there are so many people who don't have to struggle with fear in our current day and age. Because when I was a young girl, that did not exist. It wasn't until recently in the last like, you know, maybe five years where I've watched so many people come out of the closet and they aren't 
afraid to and they're just loved and accepted. From my generation, I don't know a single story about someone who came out and they were completely loved and accepted by their entire circle of family and friends. I do know that there's still a lot of people who are afraid to come out and that's why I said there's still a lot of work to do and there's still a lot of hatred in our world because that does still exist. I'm just so happy that I'm seeing change. I also don't want it to sound like I think my generation is like the millennials are the ones who changed the game. No. I meant everyone prior. The people at Stonewall. There are people who've been murdered. There are people who've been through so much just to get to the point where we are today and there's still so much work to go which is why it's so incredible that Jojo did what she did because she is part of that movement. She is part of changing our world to be like, hey look, this is okay. So many young kids look up to her and we'll see that and be like, oh, it's okay for me to be who I am too. And so everyone in the LGBTQ plus community from all time who's ever been brave enough to come out in a time where it was scary, hard, confusing, um, dangerous, they're all paving the way. And it's just, it's been really amazing to see in my lifetime that we're at a point where so many young people can come out and are loved and accepted and not told they're rotten garbage who are going to hell because that's what I experienced. So anyway, I just wanted to throw that in there because I didn't want anyone to misconstrue what I was saying because I didn't word it quite correctly. I know we still have a lot of work to do, but to watch it change is really wonderful and I'm grateful for it. So it's still so brave and honorable of people to be able to be themselves and come out now because there is still bullying, there is still people who are hateful and not accepting in the world today. Like obviously that's still very much a problem, but I'm just happy it's getting better and I'm happy to see teenagers able to like be who they are because I never, I did not know a single teenager when I was a teen who was comfortable coming out, not even in my early 20s. 20s. So yeah, it's just really beautiful and I'm just really happy for the community and there's still a lot more work to do But I'm just happy. It's headed in the right direction. That's all. So there's that. I am just down today. I'm just kind of sad today for no reason. And so if you don't want to see me be a little mopey queen, get out of here. Click off the video. Don't watch anymore. But if you don't mind watching me be a little mopey queen, hi. So I am sad and I don't really know why. I don't understand why. I feel extremely overwhelmed for kind of no reason. I mean, I have a reason, like there's a lot going on, but I feel really overwhelmed. And sometimes I get like this. Sometimes I'm like living for all the work and like all the stuff in life. I love it. And it's like, just makes me so happy and that's the majority of the time I think last year it was easy for me to understand like oh this is all different quarantine is scary this pandemic is scary I just want to go to a store I just want to do stuff you know like I was feeling that way and I'm so used to this life now because it's been almost a freaking year of this that maybe it's not computing in my head that like this is making me sad still so the fact that my life is kind of only work and being a mom which I love maybe it's I feel like I don't have any like personal identity outside of those things if that makes sense like and I think hopefully that's something moms can relate to and understand I feel like I've heard moms say that before like I'm, I'm doing my work and I love my work and I'm being a mom and I love being a mom but I don't think I haven't really left any time there for like me not that it's like all about me and my life is like oh my god like you what about me like it's it's not that I have that thought like the end of the day happened like it's one in the morning and I go oh huh, I didn't do anything for myself today. I did in the sense that like, I love playing with Flynn and I did in the sense where like, I like my work and I got work done. I want to go to the beach or go see my family or go hang out with my friends or go shopping or travel or go to the craft store. I don't know, I don't know. I just don't really feel, I never, I don't allow myself to do things for me because there's not time for that. But the hard thing is, is I don't want to eliminate the things I'm doing. Like, I don't want to not do my work. I like doing my work. I don't want to trim any of that out of my life. I like spending my time with my son and being his mom and being attentive to him and playing with him and doing the things he loves. Those things fulfill me too. I think, honestly, I'm just really tired and I, I need something different. Every day is kind of the same and I don't do anything for myself in the sense that, like, it's something that's just for me. It's not something for me and Flynn or me and Eric or me and you guys and work. And I I don't want anyone to watch this and think like oh my god like she thinks her life is so hard and she has so easy and like her life is great like why is she complaining like I agree with that so like that's part of the reason I think I'm like feel like kind of emotional is like I feel stupid feeling sad or like feeling ugh, any type of way but I feel like I'm all over the place I don't know what I'm saying I'm probably just really tired um but I think this is something moms deal with sometimes where your whole life is like being a mom and getting everything done for the family and then you're like 
where am I in this equation? <laughs> ew, I, I know I'm gonna hate this footage tomorrow. I know tomorrow I'm gonna be like, ew, you sound like such a selfish like brat. And I don't want it to seem like that. It's not like I want like a day to myself. It's like, I just wanna like go to Target. <laughs> I feel like if I could just have a day where I could like go to a craft store for 15 minutes and walk around, I feel like I'd feel better. It's not like this like, oh, my life is about other people, not myself. Like it's not that. So much of my identity and who I am and what makes me happy is my work and my family, like my son. Like that is so much of who I am. But like today, for example, like I woke up and it was playtime with Flynn, which I love and cuddles with Flynn, which I love. And then it was editing, filming, emails, building like the set for the podcast. And then I got to like dance with Flynn for a minute and watch Flynn play in the rain for a minute. But then it was back to working on the podcast and writing out all the brands, the brand deals and what I have to say. And then it was cleaning up and it was making dinner for Flynn and opening up packages and organizing things for videos. And then it was setting up the microphones and putting Flynn to sleep, bath time and sleep time. And then while he was taking his bath, I was like working on other stuff for the podcast and then put him to sleep. And immediately like I scarfed down food for the first time today, went into the podcast and we finished the podcast at midnight. And now I'm in my office uploading footage and now I'm here talking to you. So there wasn't a moment today where I could like sit down and like veg out on my phone and like watch videos. There wasn't a moment today where I could like just run an errand alone to like have a breather because I don't do that. <laughs> I don't leave my house. And I think I just need that. I think I just need like 20 minutes. <laughs> Why does that make me cry? The thought of 20 minutes alone. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. And I know, like, I hate, I don't even, like, I'm nervous to even say any of this because I feel like now, tomorrow, I'm gonna get comments that are like, just take time off of work. But, like, I don't want to. It's not that I'm like, I'm working so hard and I don't wanna be working. Like, I like my work and I like my time with my son. I just wish there was more hours in the day so that I could, like, not even more hours, like 20 minutes. <laughs> I want 20 minutes to go to the store or go see my sister or anything different. I want 20 minutes of anything different. <laughs> But like I said, tomorrow I'll be fine. The whole point, I was not intending to even talk about this. I was just gonna say this next thing. So when I was trying to like fix my podcast little set area, I was listening to music. I was listening to like all the type of music that I like. And you guys know, I love this singer, Deb Talon. She's in a band called The Weepies. And this one song started to play that I haven't heard in a really long time. And then I got in my office tonight and I was feeling kind of like sad and a, like a bummer. And I was like, I don't know if I should talk about how I'm feeling on the vlog tonight, or maybe I'll just sing. Cause sometimes when I don't know what to say, I like sing. So for some reason in my head, I was like, oh, you should re-listen to that song you heard today by Deb Talon. It was one of those things like whether you believe in God or the universe or energy or whatever you believe in, I believe there's there sure is something because I get these voices or these pulls or these intuitions or God or, you know, whatever you believe it could be telling me things every once in a while that like I need to hear. That was, I had one of those moments tonight. I got my office and I heard, listen to that song again. So I went and I listened to this song and the lyrics, oh my. Oh my god i was like okay i hear you like y'all so i was just gonna sing a part i don't know the chords i can't find the chords anywhere so i'm just gonna make up the chords but this is kind of how i'm feeling <laughs> you tie your shoes too tight you know because it feels better that way and when you don't all night you are dreaming Laces streaming down the street behind you. A river of tangled string, you are unraveling. And no one else seems to mind. You keep it to yourself, stay numb and act fine. You wear the truth under your soul like a pebble. You make it limp and sway, but it will out someday. Okay, obviously I don't know the real chords and um, I sound like butt, but oh man, that's how I feel. Cause I'm like, I don't even know why I feel sad, but I feel like if like holding it inside and I'm about to unravel, like one person could just like pull a little bit on a string of me and I'll be like, <laughs> which clearly is happening. So anyway, that's how I'm feeling. And tomorrow I'll feel fine. I'm not looking for pity or anyone to be like, oh my God, something's wrong with Glean. Cause nothing's wrong with me. I'm just a person. And sometimes as a human being, I feel overwhelmed and I don't even really understand why. But um, I honestly think it's just cause I need like 20 minutes at a craft store. <laughs> I 
I think I'd be fine. I need to like just do anything. Take Flynn to a museum or like I just want to do something that isn't just sit in my house and do the same thing every day um, and something that like will bring me joy. I don't know. I feel like, I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna go but I'm a mess. I'm fine. I'm gonna go to bed. I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. You can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast.